talking to Unit 3. This is key area uh, one of Unit 3, and it's about divisions of the nervous system and neural pathways, something uh, that really would have helped me if I had been able to do human biology when I was at school uh, is knowing about this. Uh, so if you're going or uh, thinking of doing a degree in, say, biomedical science or uh, medicine, basically something where you study anatomy. Sports. Yep, something where you study anatomy. This is actually going to be very, very helpful for you if you end up doing that at uni. Also, you need to know this in order to pass tests uh, for human biology this year, so might be handy to learn it. So uh, in terms of the stuff you've learned at NAP 5, so the brain and the nervous stuff came up a little bit, but it wasn't touched on in a great deal of detail in terms of NAP 5. It was one short key area. Um, you learn about the central nervous system, the fact that that's made up of the brain and the spinal cord. Um, you also learn the fact that the rest is just other nerves at that point. We're going to look a bit more at what the other nerves are in this. Um, we talked about the idea that the brain creates things, these motor signals and it'll send them down the spinal cord to motor neurons. So basically we learn all about signaling. Um, as well as the sensory organs sending signals up the spinal cord via the sensory neurons. So you kind of learn that pattern of you get the signal that goes up the sensory, it goes through the central nervous system in an interneuron, and then it comes back down a motor neuron, and then there is a response. So you learn that kind of pathway. We're going to look a bit more in detail into just the various different parts of signaling, as well as the other parts that are of the central nervous system and the other parts of the central nerve and the other parts of the nervous system. There's a really helpful diagram at the end of this video. So if you're the kind of person who skips to the end, skip to the end, because the diagram at the end is essentially everything you need to know about this video. All right. So uh, just to review your nervous system, your nervous system controls every organ in your body. It's the it's the reason why you're conscious of things that are happening outside your body. OK, so it receives information stimuli from our environment. So that's our external environment outside, like light and touch and taste and sound and that sort of thing. But also internal stimuli like high blood glucose, high blood water, that kind of thing. And then it also creates instructions for movement and allows conscious and unconscious movement to occur. Now, this does not mean movement while you're asleep. It means things like vasodilation and vasoconstriction, which I hope you're not thinking about right now uh, because you can't do anything about them. But the idea is, again, remember vasodilation, blood vessels going very, very wide or wider because of relaxation of smooth muscle, vasoconstriction, contracting that smooth muscle to make blood vessels a lot narrower. So in terms of your nervous system, like we've already said, in that five you learned about the central nervous system and then you learned about the other nerves. We're now looking a bit more in to that. So there's two main branches of our nervous system. One is the central nervous system or the CNS, which we already kind of touched on. The other one, which at NAT5 was just referred to as other nerves, is the peripheral nervous system, so or the PNS. So CNS and PNS, it is useful to know what they stand for because they kind of tell you where it is. Uh, now each of these are responsible for different things. We will go through them. Um, like we've already said, there's a very nice diagram at the end that splits it up to show you exactly what their roles are in terms of the different functions that they have. Okay. All right, so the central nervous system, you should already know this. It's the brain and spinal cord. Okay, so if we take nervous system as part number one and we take a little branch off to the side, we'd have central nervous system, two branches under there, one branch brain, one branch spinal cord. So that's that nervous system dealt with. We're now going to focus on peripheral nervous system. Slightly more to this one, and obviously it's the one we've not already discussed. So um, the peripheral nervous system is basically the bundle of all the other the nerves and the neurons that basically are not your brain or your spinal cord. So anything that is off of them is considered to be part of the peripheral nervous system. So it's peripheral. It's not the main central bit. It is further divided into two branches. So like your central nervous system split into your brain and your spinal cord, your peripheral nervous system is split into two things called your somatic nervous system and your autonomic nervous system, which we will touch on more of what both of these do now. Oh, yes, they do work. I was wondering if whether those animations were going to work. Say, CNS, central nervous system is labelled there. PNS is labelled there as well. Is everything I'm else. glad that worked. Great. Okay, now, your somatic nervous system. So, again, part of your peripheral nervous system, branch number one, your somatic nervous system. It contains sensory and motor neurons. That is a thing you need to know. Okay, so that's in the course documents. You need to know somatic nervous system has got both sensory and motor neurons. Its main function is to control most conscious processes. So speaking, walking, talking, the five senses that you can actually uh, consciously process. It also uh, contains the reflex response. So if you remember that from National Five, there's a couple of diagrams that are going to follow. I am going to skip over them really quickly. Pause the video if you need to have more review over. Them. So this is, again, your reflex response, also known as involuntary limb withdrawal. So the person puts their hand on the pin, that's the stimulus. 
The stimulus is detected in the sense organ receptors. Those receptors pass a signal down the sensory neuron to the interneuron to the motor neuron, and the motor neuron then uh, activates the effector, in this case it's the arm muscle, to drag the hand away. Okay, so that's the reflex arc that you do need to be familiar with at higher human level. We have a Nat5 video learned... oh, yes, covering it, which we will put the link for in the description below this. So if you have forgot about it, that. or if you for some reason didn't do Nat5 because you're crash hiring, watch that video because it will help make more sense of this. Okay, this little gif is just showing the same thing happening. Person touches the hot plate and it burns really slowly. The yellow blob shows the signal going up the sensory neuron into the spinal cord where it hits the interneuron there. Uh, across a synapse, there's a nice bit of diagram of the synapse there, um, and then it'll cross another synapse to the motor neuron, eventually, maybe, yep, across another synapse to the motor neuron, travel down the motor neuron to the muscle, and then cause the hand to move. Yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> okay, so that was the somatic nervous system, which is one of the branches of the peripheral nervous system. The other branch is called the autonomic nervous system. Now, this is the thing that controls the automatic thing. So it's autonomic, it controls the automatic thing. So the things that are unconscious to you, you do not think about them, but they happen anyway. So things that it include, and you need to know these, is uh, so things like endocrine gland control. So like things that produce hor or hor uh, glands that release hormones. So your pancreas releasing insulin, good example of one. You don't think about it. You don't think, God, I need more insulin. I need to make my pancreas work. It just happens. Uh, vasodilation and vasoconstriction like we've already explained, peristalsis, so that whole process of food moving through your body, uh, and temperature regulation. You do not think to do any of these. Your body does it without you really thinking about them. And that is your autonomic nervous system doing these things. Annoyingly, breathing rate and heart rate isn't on this list. And I made this according to the course documents. So can we include breathing and heart rate on this list as well? Okay, to add in extra complications, so not only do we have the parasympathetic uh, nervous system being branched into the autonomic and the somatic, the autonomic also has two tiny branches being the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So these automatic functions are split into your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Now these branches work antagonistically to maintain proper function of the body. Remember that word antagonistically means they have opposite functions. So if the sympathetic nervous system speeds something up, the parasympathetic is gonna slow it down. If the parasympathetic widens something, the sympathetic is going to narrow it, okay? So they work opposite each other, but that antagonistically word, you need to be familiar with it. So you have technically touched on this a tiny, tiny bit already when you were doing the heart and discussed briefly about sympathetic and parasympathetic, but we didn't really say what they were and we didn't really say much else about it. Um, but hopefully this will make a bit more sense to that stuff as well. So in terms of your sympathetic one, this is basically the one that's kind of known as your fight or flight nervous system. It's the one that triggers that response. So it's the one that actually prepares your body to take action, whether that be to fight something or to run away from it crying and screaming. Either way, it is the one that is the fight or flight. Now this thing in the little red box, you have to know that, uh, it's really important, it's one of the really important things you need to know, so you need to know that the sympathetic nervous system increases heart rate, heart and breathing rate, while slowing peristalsis and the release of digestive enzymes. So basically it increases your heart and your breathing rate, and then it decreases your peristalsis and your release of digestive enzymes, so it's changing which one is doing more of it, and unsurprisingly, parasympathetic is going to be the reverse of that but you need to know that as well. I've got that bit from Killing Eve stuck in my head, crying and running. <laughs> okay, so the parasympathetic nervous system is known as rest and digest. Don't do that in exams. Don't call it rest and digest, okay? Generally, it relaxes the body, but the exam -y things that you need to be able to regurgitate is in the red box, which is partially blocked by us. Uh, it slows down your heart and breathing rate and increases peristalsis and the release of digestive juices. So again, it does those opposite functions to the sympathetic nervous system. But... These are the effects that you do need to know. You need to be able to say in an exam uh, that the parasympathetic nervous system would have a increase on the rate of peristalsis or a decrease in the rate of uh, breathing. So you need to know those exact facts. Uh, and again, this links back to what I've just said. You learned about the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system when you did um, talking about controlling heartbeat and your heart rate. So you learnt about what the sympathetic one releases, you learnt about what the parasympathetic one releases. You can have a think for like two seconds yourself to figure out if you can remember which one's which. The answers are coming yeah. up now. Hopefully you remembered it's noradrenaline if it's a sympathetic, so the sympathetic it's the one that releases noradrenaline. I like to think of it as the fact that like 
adrenaline is the thing you get when like, you get adrenaline junkie so when you have an absolute rush it's a high so it's the thing when you are doing that fight or flight thing you get adrenaline and sympathetic is your fight or flight one so it kind of makes that link and then parasympathetic well that's the other one if you can remember one of them you can remember the other one is the other thing so parasympathetic releases acetylcholine and this slows down the pacemaker cells in the heart okay now this is the important diagram okay so this one here it maps out everything that we have just said okay if you can learn this 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 is a starting point you learn this be able to draw this you should be vaguely okay. okay so we've got the nervous system is divided into two main branches branch number one being the central nervous system that central nervous system i have no idea where these animations are going to appear so i'm going to say that central nervous system is divided into brain and spinal cord and hopefully oh no, no poop okay so it's peripheral nervous system on that side Brain and spinal cord is what the central nervous system is divided into, okay? So you've got nervous system, branch number one, central, branch number two, peripheral. Central is divided into brain and spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system. It's split into two, so it's split into your somatic and your autonomic nervous system. So that's the first kind of split of this. But then also your autonomic nervous system is split further down into your sympathetic and your parasympathetic. So whether it's fight and flight or your rest and digest one. So if you can learn this kind of flow diagram, learn the branches off of it, that is a good start. It, it really is. It's, it's, it's handy because everything that we've just gone through, the first time I ever learned this, I didn't have this diagram and actually I was really confused about how it all linked together. So this diagram shows how they all, uh, what each part means essentially there. So nice important diagram. Section two of this key area is about neural pathways. So rather than looking at pathways of the nervous system as a whole, we're looking at an individual neuron, how does it transmit uh, through um, say it's through the nervous system. Okay, so we'll see you in part two.